That's the point, and that's you know, and it's also the point of judges is that there's no king. Everybody does what's right in their own eyes. It's not working. The idea was originally you're going to go into this land. God is going to be your king, and He is going to be, and you're going to serve Him. Okay, and the whole point of each one of these things that's going on is to show us this doesn't work. Okay, let's move on. This doesn't work. So when we already know that if somebody comes and says we're going to move out to um, uh, Salt Lake City and we are going to have God as our king, we already know it's not going to work. The Bible has already told us this. Okay? If somebody goes and starts a cult and says God is our king, it is eventually going to degrade. This is all meant to, to show us each one of these lessons. And as it says in the book of Romans and in the book of Galatians, the law was introduced to show us our need for Jesus. Well, all of this was introduced. There's, God is supposed to be the king, that people are going to obey him. The wickedness of the human heart says we're not going to obey God. And so what happens? God gives them judges. And the judges rule during the period of their life and then they die, and then somebody else becomes a judge. And in between it, there's nothing but chaos. And even when the judge is in power, there's nothing but chaos. It's not working. Okay? So what, does, what happens? They ask for a king. At the time of Samuel, they said, let us be like all the other nations around us that have a king. This isn't working. Okay? And so Samuel cries all night long, and he says, Oh, Lord, you know, I, I, why have they done this? Why have they asked for a king? And the Lord answered very specifically, they haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. They rejected me when I was their only king. They rejected me when I gave them judges. And now they're rejecting me and asking for a king. And so, once again, kings are established. And they blow it there. All of this is to show us that we need Jesus. The whole thing is to lead us. It doesn't matter what society on your earth. It doesn't matter how beautiful it's laid out. If you have a constitution that has a president that has a judiciary, and that has a Congress, eventually it's going to degrade into something that it wasn't meant to be. Proof, United States of America. That's the, and this was, this was established on biblical precepts. It was established on the three roles that are in the book of Judges. The president, which is the ruler, the judiciary, which is the priests, and the Congress, which is the the uh, the uh, yeah the priests and the Levites. Okay, so you, you've got the three, and it still didn't work because we have now taken Jesus out of the picture, and that's why it's not working again. Anyway, don't mean to divert so far, but that's what this prophecy, all of these prophecies that we're reading right now, all lead us to. Is it after eleven? I don't want Mary no, to be late. No, no. Okay, good. All right. Um, Okay, so anyway, that was Dan. I don't know much more about Dan. They're not listed in there. There are a couple times they're mentioned. Uh, what great judge was from the tribe of Dan? Uh, Samson. Yes, yeah, Samson, the son of Manoah of the tribe of Dan. Okay, and he blew it too. So whatever. Shocking. What? Shocking. I don't know how we consider him great. Well, he was. You know what? He he was mentioned. I wasn't he mentioned in uh, uh, Hebrews eleven? Is he? Yes, but, I, you know, when well, you're the, reading the story... Well, I know! I mean, he's just, just a royal mess up. Well, and so was David. Yeah, David was too. But they understood that they needed the Lord. There, there's a difference in their heart. And yes, it is. Yeah. I, I don't have time. Time fails me to tell you of Samson and Jephthah, and that's where he's mentioned. So he's mentioned with these other judges as well, as good judges. So, yeah, he blew it, and he did all the things that he shouldn't have done. But in the end, his heart was right with the Lord. And... Um, uh, it, uh, talking about Samson, just because we're talking about it, this is kind of fun, and if I've mentioned this before, I'll, I'll, I'll stop, but um, they have the Samson option in Israel. Have I mentioned that in here? What do you think that means? Israel today, the Samson option. Think it through. What did Samson do? What's he known for the most? Oh, well, no, haircut, but afterward. Destroying... destroying. The all of the, the, the people around him, all of the Philistines yes. that were around him, he killed 3,000 of them and he killed himself in the process. Israel has what's known as the Samson option. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They have nukes pointed at every, and they have, I guarantee you, they have told these people this. They know this. We have, they have not only nukes, but they have thermonuclear devices and they also have the neutron bomb that we did not build. They have that technology there. They have this. And if they are ever their vow, they go up on Masada when they vow, every Jewish person becomes a member of the military for two years I believe, and they go to the top of Masada to take their vow, 
and their vow is that never again. And if they are, it is coming. And but I'm going to tell you, it will never ever be that they will be overrun again. They will. They don't need to because the Bible says it's not going to happen. But they have the Samson option. They will destroy everything around them. Everything will be laid waste in the Middle East if they are ever threatened like that. And people know this. So you know. Anyway, there you go. Kind of, kind of fun stuff. But that's Samson is from the tribe of Dan. Okay. So. Um, oh, and then the last verse of that, I love what he says. I have waited for your salvation, Amen. O Lord. It's the first time in the Bible that the name Jesus is specifically mentioned. I have waited for your Yeshua, O Lord. Okay, so there it is. It's just this insert of praise, and it's the word Yeshua. Okay, I have waited for your Jesus, O Lord. Yeshua, okay. That's anyway, a so... Big, that's a mighty big veil across Israel. Oh, I know it. I know. How about even more explicit? Even more explicit is the one where they come out of the Red Sea and it says, The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation, my Jesus. Right? Okay. Big veil over him. Okay, anyway, that's the first time in the Bible that one is mentioned there. Okay, please, go ahead. Um, where are we? Gad. 19. As for Gad, raiders shall raid him. But he will raid at their heels. Okay, this one here is translated a little bit differently, and I like it simply because of what it means. Gad, a troop shall tramp upon him. Okay, a troop, Gad means a troop. It also means fortune, just so you know. Later in, I think it's Isaiah, he says you mix the, the bowl of destiny and you something, the uh, you raise a cup to fortune, okay, and the word would be Gad. In other words, they're, they're trusting in fortune and lottery tickets and all that instead of trusting in the Lord. Whatever. Fortune. Okay. But go ahead. Um, 20. As for Asher, his food shall be rich and he will yield royal dainties. Okay. You know, that's kind of cute there. I like the way it is. And um, uh, I, it, it probably, and I don't know this, okay, so I'm just saying this, this is probably the case is that they're a very productive, fertile area that they settled. I, I, I'm just guessing that. I have no idea. Or maybe they have Dainties. Maybe they've got um, you know good things like that they use for uh, making uh, uh, treats over there or something. You could look, but um, I don't know. I'm just speculating because I've never done a study on this particular chapter. I'm just doing it all off the top of my head. But um, then Naphtali is a doe let loose. He gives beautiful words. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's just it's a very nice blessings on these sons because they, they hadn't caused any trouble. There's nothing in there that, uh, uh, you know, but as it says, Zebulun and Naphtali will be lightly esteemed, but later they will be where the light is, shines in the darkness. Okay, so good. One. And then the longest blessing is given to, maybe not as long as, jo I think it is Joseph It's the longest. Either Judah or Joseph is the longest, but Joseph gets a big long one. Go ahead. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a spring. Its branches run over a wall. The archers bitterly attacked him and shot at him and harassed him. And his bow remained firm and his arms were agile. From the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. From the God of your father who helps you and by the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of heaven above, Blessings of the deep that lies beneath. Okay, that verse right there is the one that I, I, I said, I think in this class, that's the one where Zion, oil, and gas, this particular verse and from the Song of Moses, he said the blessings of the deep. And so he went into this particular area of Israel, which is the area of Joseph, the, the, tri tri the land allotment given to Joseph, and he researched it out. And this is where he is drilling right now. Israel is drilling in these areas for oil and for natural gas. And that's a prophecy right here. It says, the blessings of heaven above and the blessings of the deep that lies beneath. And he simply read the Bible and he said, there's oil there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Hey, everything he's done has been totally based on just his analysis of the Bible and saying, well, you know, God made this and he said it. So anyway, um, there he is. An that's right, his yeah. trust in what the Bible says. So it's just as yeah. cool that that verse is there and that, you know, all of these things are out there. Well, okay. And, and most times it says the deep, the meaning the ocean. In that case, they also have in the ocean, and I don't know if this is on, I don't know where Joseph is located, 
but the deep also does mean the ocean, but they have found in the ocean off of the coast of Israel, they have found the Leviathan well, which is right on the border, the north of Israel. It is one of the largest natural gas wells in the entire world, and they found it recently. And you don't think there's some dispute going on now because that's the, that's the fuel of the future with all these global warming nut jobs. And so that may be, I don't know, something like oil or that, that may be the impetus for Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. That may be it. But whatever it is, they have got that one and then they've got another one off the coast a little further but south by Gaza. And Israel is out there already starting to get this. So it could be the deep off of the coast or it could be the deep in the ground. But this is where these people are actually doing their drilling and they have found these things. And this Leviathan well, if you know the term Leviathan, means the great sea creature. That's where they took the name from is out of the Bible. And I got to tell you what, a lot going on over there in, this, in, in our time which has all been prophesied way back then. Mary, have a wonderful week. Thank you. All right, take care. Okay, so uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have surpassed the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. Now, the everlasting hills, and I may be wrong, there's a couple terms, but I think that term, and I didn't bring my Hebrew Bible with me today, but I think it's Givet Olam, which is exactly the name of one of the wells that they're driving, drilling over there, is Givet Olam, the everlasting hills. So, anyway, they're, they're, it, it, not only is he drilling wells, but he's applying what was said here. Now, I may be wrong, everlasting hills, but I think that's the term. And then uh, mountain is a har, like har Megiddo, uh, the mountain of Megiddo, right? But I think it's give it olam, the everlasting hills. Anyway, go ahead. May they be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers. Okay, in this one it says the one separate from his brothers. Either way, he was separate from his brothers because he was taken down to Egypt. Yep. But you can see the wonderful blessing that he received from his dad. Okay. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoil. Which goes right to, I've read this one, so I'm not going to read it again, but it goes right to Judges 20, that account where, the one that you were talking about, where they went up, they uh, did the same thing as Sodom and Gomorrah, exact same thing. They said, beat on the door, send out this guy, we want to have sex with him, and they said, no, take you know, my daughter and his concubine. Well, they threw the concubine out there, raped her all night long. She died right she at the, died. the threshold, mm -hmm. cut her into pieces sent her all over Israel to the 12 tribes. They came and they destroyed Benjamin down to 600 people. Got 400 wives for him. They made an oath, if you're not aware of the story, they made an oath that nobody in Israel is to give their daughter to the Benjamites. Well, the Jewishness comes through the daughter, through the, the female. And so that means that a tribe is going to be cut off from Israel. And they mourned over it after they had killed all of Benjamin except for 600 people. Now we have a gap in the tribes of Israel. So they devised a plan so that they wouldn't break their oath by, there was one place, I think it was uh, Gilead or one of these places didn't show up for the battle. And they made an oath that anybody that doesn't show up for the battle is going to be killed. So they went in there, they killed all the people and they took the women and gave them to the Benjamites. 400 women, but there's still 200 people without wives. And so they came up with another plan, is that when the girls of Shiloh were out dancing around the, uh, at a festival around the tabernacle, they said to the 200 guys without wives, they said, just go and abduct the girls and make them your wife. And when their fathers protest, we'll say, you know, we, we want these people to have wives so we don't lose a tribe in Israel. So all 600 of them ended up getting a Jewish woman for their wife so that the tribe of Israel, or Benjamin, could be carried on. But it became the smallest tribe. It also became the tribe with the first king of Israel, who is Saul. And it also became the tribe of Paul. Paul. Right? Which is funny because Paul's name was Saul. Saul. Right. Okay. So it's kind of, you, get, you see these plan words and these plan names that are going on. But Paul, who is Saul, was from Benjamin. And that's why he bragged. He had bragging rights when he said, I have bragging rights over all these other people that are in Galatians. He's saying they're coming up and they're trying to, to uh, show you how great they are in their Judaism and all this. He says, if anybody has a right to brag, I do. And he says, I am a Pharisee, a Hebrew of Hebrews from the tribe of Benjamin. That's because of this account. It goes back to Judges 20. I am from this teeny little tribe. 